This update from Research Rabbit works extremely well with Zotero 6, like great timing, but also allows for so many other features that I've been wanting for a while and I think the team know it. Uh, it's brought in public collections so we can share collections with other people without them, without their ability to change and alter what's going on. So when I share one of the pieces of research that I've done, I can actually share a public, co public collection link in the video description for all of you to have a look at and add to your own collections without it impacting me. And there are categories. So let's get in and have a look at what's going on. As you can see, Research Rabbit, it looks a little different from the last time I shared. I've, I'll put the video link uh, probably above where I am right now, like over my face. Um, so anything that you do, anything that I don't mention in here, I've mentioned in that video. So as you can see on the sidebar, I have lots of different categories. Now, categories are different to collections. I'll go over them in a second. A category can be added at the top of the screen, but I'm going to go through public collections first. If we go down to the bottom, We've got shared with me, which are collections that have been shared with me from other people, which is the uh, previous way that we could share collections. But now there's public collections and these work the same way as you would with a YouTube channel or any other creator on any other social platform. You follow a collection and what you do is you grab the link and you just add it into your uh, research rabbit. So what I've done inside of the research rabbit group, I've grabbed uh, this collection from one of the other users. And this isn't an area of research I personally look into, so I'm not going to know all of the researchers and what's going on, but this is one of the collections that I could have a look at. Uh, and this is under my public collections category. Now, when I come into here, I can still use this as, as a normal collection. So I can filter for things. I can go and sort different things by citation, recency, etc., etc. I can show the abstracts, hide the abstracts, show comments. There aren't any comments, I believe. No, there's not. Um, but if there were comments, I'd be able to see them. I can select all of the papers or um, select one or a couple of the papers. So I held control on my keyboard to select more than one paper. And you can see now I've got three selected papers. And then I can carry on my search so I can go to similar works or uh, let's go through earlier works or later works and maybe have a look at just the authors and have a look at what this person has written. Let's have a look at their published work. And now I know that they've written all of these things and I, I have a look at the timeline maybe or the last author and you, you see the point. All of the different search features we had in Research Rabbit are all available inside of public collections. Now, there are some restrictions because when we come into here, if we want to add a paper like I would normally, um, let's add a random sports paper because that has absolutely nothing to do with uh, this research field. And I go add collection. It says no. <laughs> it, it says no, because it will be adding something to uh, this this person's this researcher's collection. But I can't do that. But what I can do is if I want this paper in one of my collections, I can click onto the paper and then I can go add to other collections. And what this does is this brings up the rest of my collections, which are groups of papers. So collections are groups of papers. Categories are groups of collections. Uh, and what this allows me to do is I can just add it into any of those collections. I could then add a category and then add it in underneath. But that's not what I would be doing personally. I would add it to a collection I already have. So we can add it to a collection, but we can't remove it. So if we try and remove this paper from the collection, oh, that's a really bad paper. It says no, <laughs> it denies you. It doesn't let you do that because it's not your collection. It's someone else's. So when I go into the three dots, it actually shows me it's a public collection. Now I can't click this off because it's not my collection, but I can share this link. So when I'm working with other people, say my research team, and I have a collection of research or someone else finds a collection of research. So for example, I find one of the researchers, their research rabbit, they have a collection I'm really interested in. Maybe it's to do with prior beliefs or cognitive psychology or Bayesian brain hypothesis, who knows? Uh, and I go, oh, that's a really interesting collection. I follow that collection. I come into here, I grab the link and I say to everyone, everyone else in my research group, hey, this is a really cool collection. I put that link into whatever chat, WhatsApp, Teams, whatever. Then they can follow that collection as well. So instead of me having to go and say, hey, here's a load of papers and blasting loads of links at people, which is very irritating, uh, I can just send them one link and then they can add, add the papers that they want, leave papers that they don't want. Uh, and then once they've grabbed those papers, they can just unfollow the collection. And then it's no longer in the public collections list. And if they want to follow it again, they just 
go back and follow the collection again. Now, if I come back into here, you'll see there's, there's some information down here, but you can't really do much at the moment because it's a public collection. So when I go into my own personal collections, how do I make something public? Well, I'm going to go into notes. I'm going to go to my Feynman Technique collection. I'll go through categories and collections in a second. Go to three dots and you can see there's the tick and I can tick it on and now it's public or I can turn it off and now it's not public. And that's how you can just switch between public and non-public. So now let's go through some categories. I can add a new category at the top. So uh, let's just add a new category. It's thinking about it. Now down the bottom, here's a new category, but it hasn't got any collections in it. So I'm going to add a collection. I can either use this plus button down here or the plus button next to any of the categories. So I can add a collection straight away from here. I can change the name of the category or I can delete. The category now i have some dots at the side which is my own personal way of categorizing the categories or giving statuses to categories um so if i add a collection yes let's just go enter i've now added a collection to that category uh, so i've now added an untitled collection to the new category you can see um now when i go into this collection it works exactly the same as all the other collections add papers, then similar works, explore, etc, etc. But I don't want any of that. So I'm going to delete that. OK. Bye bye. And it's gone. If you have a collection that doesn't have a category, it will go into the uncategorized sections. Now, for me, I'm looking at these going, oh, well, there's that untitled collection. I'm going to delete that one because I don't need that anymore. Let's go. OK. And this is one that I made earlier. And again, I don't want it. So I'm just going to delete that. OK. But P hacking, I actually want this in a category so I can come into the three dots, go into this drop down and you see there are all of the categories. And what I can do is I can click on any of these. So let's put it into my notes because I know that's where I'm going in a second. Uh, get rid of that. So now P hacking has gone from uncategorized. If I scroll down to notes, it's now in my notes category. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, now I don't actually want it there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in and then I'm going to move back to uncategorized. So how have I actually add statuses onto these categories? What I've done is inside of the name, I've just added an emoji. So on my on my uh, keyboard, I've put Windows and then the dot and then green dot and then typed in whoops, typed in coaching and then go OK. Now, this is me. This is how I'm doing it. But green is top level. Yellow is second level. Orange is third. And then if there is a fourth, there'll be red. And the exclamation marks are slightly different. Now, what you will have noticed inside of uh, this, inside of my phone technique when I brought this up, is I have what looks like tags, but they're not tags, traditional tags. What they are is they are notifications of other collections this paper is in. So this paper is in my done collection. This paper is in my partial collection. And when I go into my tags category, I have collections. So this is my done collection. And this paper is in the effective coaching collection. Now, the reason I've done it like this is because Research Rabbit doesn't currently have tags, so I'm treating these collections as tags. Now, it doesn't really matter how many papers are in these collections because I'm not really using them to search. I'm just using them to notify me of whether I've done a paper, so I've, I've read that paper, or I've partially read that paper. How you categorize things is entirely up to you. And then this one doesn't have anything because I haven't done anything to it. How does this work with Zotero, you may ask? Because all of my uh, collections are synced with Zotero. Well, if I bring up Zotero now, you can see, okay, all of the categories are folders that have folders inside of them. All of the folders that are just folders are collections. So if I go into my learning category, you see RRC, that's a category. And then I come into here, I've got loads of different collections inside of this learning category. However, if I go into sports coaching, I have a category, then I have collection, 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 but this is also a category. So this is where I have multiple levels of hierarchy. So I've got sports coaching as a category, and then I have LTAD as a category. And if we come into Research Rabbit very quickly, you can see coaching is a green category you can see there it is it's green but ltad is yellow because it's a second level snc is also yellow because it's a second level then if i come to here ra rae which is relative age effect is a 
another uh, level of hierarchy, which is orange, which is how I'm dealing with multiple levels of hierarchy inside of Research Rabbit alongside uh, Zotero. And all of these papers are synced. And I have a video coming out either at the end of this week or next week showing you how I actually do all of my research gathering inside of Zotero. And it syncs to um, Research Rabbit. So hopefully you have a better idea of how Research Rabbit works. And I'm really excited to, 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 to work. And if you do have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I will answer them as best as I can.